after this whole pandemic just shut everything down we're just excited we we're wondering like what, what happened to this event you know so I'm really happy that it came back though sometimes it's nice to just paint over and start anew that's kind of like street art it's it's not meant to, to last forever it was actually at a neighborhood event it was 2017 and I saw the neighborhood association president and Breeze over there and I was like, hey y'all, what do you guys think about doing a mural festival in March? And they, um, they seemed cool with it. I had asked uh, Murals of Phoenix to help out. They were on board with doing it and uh, we just did it and it went pretty flawlessly and it just feels like people want to do it every year and uh, so do I. So. I like to feel like Oak Street Alley is sort of a representation of the Southwest and I feel like it's representative of different people having some indigenous native artists from Tohono O'odham and Apache and um, I believe other tribes as well you know there's this like a Latino representation but it just feels like a really decent platform for people to share their ideas and uh, their images of what they like they believe is useful and beautiful. This color is a really good base watercolor yeah, yeah. for the water water, you know. So is that what you're going to do? Something to see? Yeah, um, because uh, it's a climate change topic. I want people to stop using plastic water bottles once and throwing them in the garbage. Oh, I'm so with you on that. Oh, good. I'm <laughs> sick of it. I, I, I can't stand that people won't reuse a plastic bottle. For me, I've always been trying to find art, you know, wherever I live, wherever I go. So. For it to be in my neighborhood and for it to be like really blossoming is something really good for us here to, to experience, you know. And now we're out here and we're ready to like let the world know, you know, so it's good. People are feeling it, they're out, the weather's beautiful and we're going to cover the neighborhood in art. So I'm psyched. This is just a very good healing thing for the Coronado District and for the city. It's going to get bigger every year and I'm glad I can participate with the crew and uh, I'm happy. People are kind of settling into the old expectations again, but it's fun because people are out so we get to actually make art in front of people and interact with people and have conversations and I think that makes things a little easier. How can you say like, you know, I was there when they were painting this. It's kind of nice to like see the time that it takes to putting something together and putting it on a wall and it stays there and people to admire it. The only thing I can say is I freaking love this community and I freaking love living here and I love all the people associated with everything that happens in Coronado and I'm so excited to be a part of it. This neighborhood is incredible and the people in it are a lot like Phil Freedom. They're all like movers and shakers and a lot of like the underground arts, which is really important when your city is going through gentry and change. We moved here six years ago now. It was a happy accident. I didn't realize how many artists actually lived in Coronado and I kept being pulled to this place. And I was like, well, that makes sense because it is such an art community. Of course I would be pulled to something like that. I grew up here and Phoenix has always been my home base, everything. I can't go anywhere else that just makes me feel like the way it does here. Every now and then I always gotta pay respect by just riding Phoenix or just Arizona, just because you know it's the respect and love that I have for my state. I paint wildlife mostly, but I also love the desert and I love Arizona. And so this is a feel-good piece that we came up with. We just want people to come by and enjoy the scenery of the desert. We are staying in the neighborhood and we've decided to take a walk and it kind of caught us by surprise. We did not expect any of this. A lot of people, you know, unfortunately think street art is just crime, probably drugs, fights around the neighborhood. But here it's very welcoming. You can tell it's a loving community. They love what they do. I just love it here. <laughs> I really wish our town would do something like this because it really brings people together and I think that's awesome. I'm doing a community mural, so I'm inviting the kids and anyone who come, wants to come out and paint with me. Uh, we're going to do a whole wall of little monsters so they can join and paint with me. I teach the difference between graffiti and street art, and they know here that this it's welcome, right? It's welcome, it's not illegal, it's welcome, they can come do it, and it's fun. <laughs> this is history in the making today. That's what's really special about today. We're really excited to be the first group facilitating an augmented reality experience during the mural fest. So it's a few easy steps, people will sign in and they can walk around in their avatar and explore it. The heat says it's noon 30. <laughs> Definitely hot out. It seems like everyone likes it so far, they're like showing their kids like the lizards. They keep calling it a gecko. It's a chameleon. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I work yeah. my magic more and more. <laughs> I'm starting to 
explore the neighborhood. So I take walks and I, I, instead of like zooming by in a car, I'm actually stopping to smell the roses. And I come by here and I enjoy the art and everything. One thing we we're trying to do with this year is expand it. That was the idea of the Oak Street Alley takeover. And I saw a few blank walls, pretty cool alleys. That's Almeria. I hit them up to see if they'd be down to allow us to paint there, and they were. And then there's another alley at McDeezy's, we started to call it, over there behind the main ingredient, the restaurant. So I just kind of invited them in to the fold, and they were down. Part of the reason was, you know, we're all still, we were coming out of a pandemic, and we wanted to provide space for people that didn't want the crowd. Right? So like, if you wanted to see some live art, you could still do that with less people out. For us, it's like like a second stage to Oak Street, which is cool by us, you know? So right now we got just a bunch of artists coming in here and just putting down some art. But this alleyway, there's nothing that really happens here. There's no garbage. There's no garbage man that comes through and picks up the trash. So it's just an open alley. A lot of uh, transients camp out here and stuff like that. So what they were going to do is the two properties were going to purchase the alley and they was going to go and, and do away with the alley. So in hopes into revitalizing this area and possibly bringing the murals in, maybe it'll be a little bit different. <clears throat> Walking down an alley that runs by my house that used to be full of trash and a lot of terrible memories out here. But beautiful beings came in and created some beautiful art honoring my mom's roots, my roots, and they brought so much art down the alley turned it all into this beautiful, beautiful creation. And um, talk about gratitude, talk about you know, changing a narrative in one's life. Amazing, man. just a little bit of paint, creativity, and copious amounts of selfless love. You create such beauty. And, uh, yeah, so I'm very lucky. What's up, dudes? I'm on the mic now. Yeah. <laughs> Miguel's like, what, fucking Kevin? <laughs> um, it's nice being in like the background area where I don't feel like I'm like in the public because I think I'd get a little nervous painting in front of everybody. There's maybe next year, maybe there. next year I'll be the motherfucker on like the 13 foot ladder, like, what's up? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, Mike. <laughs> Charlie, the owner of the home, commissioned me to do a memorial piece. I was going to paint this probably earlier in the year, but I held off so we could do it for the Oak Street mural. It's just kind of an important piece, so I'm going to take my time today and make sure that it looks great so that uh, it could stay here for, for a while, you know, use some quality paint so that the sun doesn't burn it out. But, um, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll last a while here, so it'll be good, yeah. We have this thing, you know, Dia de los Muertos. So as long as you talk about someone, they'll always be around. Adrian Salinas passed away. Uh, she got abducted over in Tempe. Uh, there's still like a $20,000 reward with the FBI. And so with art comes a community and with community comes awareness. And so I think it's important to like have her mural put out there. I think people get more attached to memorial stuff. I think it provides a sense of permanence for some people, you know, at least some temporary permanence, and I think people really resonate with that, and it gives them a feel like, well, the mural alley is partially theirs because their loved ones are respected and, and um, dedicated to that over there, you know. When you really think about life and existence, it, it's fleeting, you know, we, we get older every day and things are going to change and it's not always going to change for the better and it's just like, well, might as well get to know each other, might as well try to appreciate each other and be able to, to share experiences or cups of sugar or get everyone activated and celebrating a do-it-yourself sort of arts festival. I'm just glad it went well, you know, and that everyone kind of left with a good experience that and then just so much art can you know we had so many friends and so many people just come out and you know bless the neighborhood with more art I taught the weeping willow how to cry I show the clouds how to cover up a clear blue sky and the tears I cried for that woman are going to drown deep big river and I'm gonna sit right here until I die well, I met her at 
accidentally in St. Paul, Minnesota. Tore me up every time I heard it draw that southern draw. I heard my dream went back down the street, come Orton and Davenport. I followed you, Big River, when you called. How to cover up a clear blue sky And the tears that cried for that woman I'm gonna drown you, big river And I'm gonna sit right here until I die Well, I taught the weeping willow how to cry I showed the clouds how to cover up a clear blue sky And the tears that cried for that woman I'm gonna drown you, big river and I want to sit right here until I die. I said, Oh, I'm going to sit right here until I die.